Hello family, I'm back with this how black magic works part 2 and let's learn a little bit more how this crap works I see here ugly voodoo doll <laughs> crazy so let's do this family in terms of magic itself the word magic or the word sihr in Arabic linguistically the word sihr in Arabic refers to something which is hidden and which the reason for its effect is hard to realize. It's hard to find the reason for its effect. This is what linguistically the word sihr means in Arabic. As for the technical understanding of sihr, what is sihr in the istilah? What is sihr in the understanding of the sharia? Then sihr has been defined in some different ways and each one of these definitions gives us a little bit more information about what magic really is. Some of the scholars said magic is to turn somebody away from something or to turn somebody towards something, to make somebody love someone or to make somebody hate someone against their will. Yeah, we saw this before. And as we can see, this is not a comprehensive definition of magic. This is simply describing some of the characteristics or some of the effects of magic. And we find these different definitions amongst the ulama of Islam. Some of them defined magic by describing some of its effects. Some of them defined magic as describing the method that the magician the used. Dog. And some of them had a more general definition of magic. So this first definition is that magic is to turn somebody away from something or to turn somebody towards something, to make somebody love someone and to make somebody hate someone. I.e. all of these things against that person's will. Abu Muhammad al-Maqtisi said that magic is spells, incantations and amulets which affect the body and the heart and the mind of the afflicted person and so it kills some of them and it makes others ill and it causes the marriage of others to break up all of this by the permission of Allah. This is a more comprehensive definition, but it's still not the most comprehensive. It's one of the more comprehensive definitions. Spells, incantations, amulets that are blown on, that the, the magician blows on with his, his foul breath and his foul spittle that he blows on these things. And he does so to affect the body, to affect the heart, to affect the mind. And so he kills some and makes them sick and others he makes their marriage break up. But none of this happens except with the permission of Allah Azza wa Jal. A more comprehensive definition of magic is to say that magic is a contract, an agreement between the magician and the jinn. On one side, we have the first party. The first party is the magician. And on the other side, we have the second party. And the second party is the jinn. But this is not a contract which is understood by any legal system in the world. It is not a contract of agreement upon birr and taqwa. Instead, it is a contract upon al-ithm wal-udwan, upon sin and transgression. And it is a contract made up of two parties. The first party is the magician and the second party is the jinn. And the magician says, I will do some stuff for you and you will do some stuff for me. And we will make this agreement between ourselves. So this is a more comprehensive definition of magic because it, 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 it covers spells, which are, I guess the agreement made verbally, incantations, it incurs, uh, to the tying of knots and the blowing on knots and all of the other forms that magic takes but all of these definitions give us a little bit more information and they give us an idea about just what the reality of magic is. But there is nothing clearer and nothing more easy to understand or easier to understand than the explanation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of magic in the Quran. The first point, magic is something which is learned. It is not something you are born with. I mentioned this last week. We do not have boy wizards who are born and just grow up and accidentally happen to be a magician. Mag magic is something which... Yeah, it's like you seen those movies, you just born as a witch. No, it's not like that. ...is learned. 
Where do we benefit this from in the ayah? Magic is something that is learned. And they followed instead what the devils had recited during the reign of Sulaiman. It was not Sulaiman who disbelieved, but the shaitan disbelieved, teaching people magic and that which was revealed to the two angels at Babylon. But the two angels did not teach anyone until they said, we are only a trial, so do not disbelieve by practicing magic. And yet they learned from them that which they cause a separation between a man and his wife. Based on this ayah, and those of you who know this ayah by heart, where do we benefit that magic is something that can be learned? It's something that's learned. It's not something you're born with. And they teach people. Three times teaching is mentioned. Teaching people magic, the shaitan teaching people magic. And the two angels not teaching anybody, and they learn from them that which they cause separation between man and wife. So this is something which is learnt. It is a form of knowledge, but it is a form of knowledge that does not benefit. It is knowledge that has nothing in it except harm and disbelief and evil. But it is a form of knowledge and it is something which is learnt. People learn it from books. People learn it from teachers. People learn it from the jinn. It is not something which is a skill that people are born with or something and not a gene that people have in their you know, genetic code. This is something that people learn. Secondly, that magic is an act of disbelief. Where do we benefit this from the ayah? وَمَا كَفَرَ سُلَيْمَانْ وَلَكِنَّ الشَّيَاطِينَ كَفَرُوا يُعَلِّمُونَ النَّاسَ السِّحْرِ Sulaiman did not disbelieve, but the shayateen disbelieved teaching people magic. And by teaching people magic, they disbelieved. And how do we benefit then that even learning it, forget teaching it, even learning it is disbelief. وَمَا يُعَلِّمَانِ مِنْ أَحَدٍ حَتَّى يَقُولَا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ فِتْنَةٌ فَلَا تَكْفُرُ The angels did not teach anybody until they said, We are a trial for you, do not disbelieve. Meaning by learning, you will disbelieve. And also the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whoever purchased the magic would not have مَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ خلاق. He would not have any share in the hereafter. So from these points, we can see that magic is an act of disbelief. Where in the ayah do we learn that magic causes real harm? That it is not like the Mu'tazila or some of the Mu'tazila said that it is only tricks of the eye and tricks of the mind that make people feel that they have you know, seen something that they haven't seen, but it has no reality to it. This is what the Mu'tazila said. Where do we find in the ayah something that we can use to respond to the Mu'tazila in this false statement of theirs? To prove that magic causes real harm. We benefit from this, the statement that there is no, they have no share in the hereafter. That's one thing. Where something even clearer that we can say to these people from the Mu'tazila, you are wrong in your statement that magic is nothing but tricks of the mind. Magic is something real. The separation between husband and wife. The separation between husband and wife. Like I said, family, it is real, but if you let that go to your mind, if you have a weak mind, all the bad things are gonna happen. If someone do something to you to get sick, and they let you know, oh, some bad guy did the black magic for you, and you're gonna get sick and die. And if you put that in your mind, oh my God, what I'm gonna do now? I'm going to die because someone did black magic for me. And you think about that and you let that work to your mind. You done. I'm telling you, you done. I saw this so many times. You done. So, don't, don't trust God. Put a lot ahead of everything. Don't let this crap get to your mind because that will be bad. This is something real. This is not something imagined. The husband does not imagine that he is separated from his wife and the wife does not imagine that she is separated from the husband. This is something which is very, very, very real. That there is no harm without the permission of Allah. This is clear from the statement of Allah. They cannot harm anybody except with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And bear in mind when we talk about the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are not saying that Allah Azza wa Jal loves this thing to happen. There is a difference between what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows to happen and between what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. Allah loves nothing but good. Allah loves nothing but what is good and what is pure. Uh, and Allah hates disbelief and Allah Azza wa Jal hates for us to disobey him. But Allah Azza wa Jal for a wisdom that he has decrees that certain things happen and not see Allah hates the disbelief once you uh, start to think that God works for you that means you don't believe in Allah that means everything you did the pray you talk at night and before you go to sleep that was kind of fake for Allah and he agree with that things to happen to to that people Nothing happens without the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect in justice and perfect in wisdom Azza wa Jal. There is no such thing as good magic or white magic. This is clear from the ayah. Again, the brothers have mentioned parts of the ayah. It, they learn what harms them. They learn what harms them and it does not benefit them in any single way. There is no white magic, there is no good magic, there is no magic of Sulaiman, there is no, no magic, magic of Dawood and all the other forms of magic that the people said, which are supposedly good magic or white magic, magic for the good of the people. There is nothing in magic except disbelief and evil, corruption and worshipping the shaitan disbelieving in Ar-Rahman subhanahu wa ta'ala. We mentioned the opinion of some of the Mu'tazila and the philosophers that magic has no reality, that it's simply tricks of the mind, and we showed how this is uh, not true. Some more points of benefit. What about the ruling of this pretend magic? What about buying your kids a little, you know, box set on how to do little magic tricks and make the card disappear and pick a card, any card? Haram. In reality, this is something without a shadow of a doubt, which is very haram. Why? Because it leads to imitating the magicians. It makes somebody love magic. It makes them love magicians. It makes them encouraged towards practicing it. And at the end of the day, it shows a kind of, a, a kind of a affinity and a kind of a love towards magicians. And it is a step towards practicing no real good. magic. So it's not permissible for people to buy these kinds of kits. Other forms of knowledge that are related to magic that have the same ruling, fortune telling, soothsaying, reading the tea leaves, reading the palms, astrology, a diviner or a seer, someone who says that I can, my car got, so I can tell you where your car got stolen, who's got it, I can tell you uh, who did this, I can, you know, somebody, uh, you know, somebody broke your window last night, I can tell you who it is, people who write horoscopes and so on and so forth, all of these things together are uh, under the, the ruling of magic and everything that I've said applies to them. What about these people we see on TV? What about David Blaine? What about Chris Angel and all of these people that are seen on TV? And what is the ruling of watching them? It is said that some of these people use tricks of the camera and tricks of the studio and computer generated graphics to do what they do. Even if this is true, it would be haram to watch them. But from my experience and what limited knowledge I have and Allahu A'lam, it seems to me that these people are genuinely engaged in magic. And it is very clear that the description of the magician applies very closely to them. And many of the tricks they do cannot be explained away by tricks of the television. Even if they were tricks of the television, it would not be permissible for you because this would be something that is showing love towards the magicians, imitating the magicians, loving the people who hate Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it would not be permissible anyways, but it seems that they are genuinely magicians, the majority of them, and it is extremely, extremely serious to watch them. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever goes to a fortune teller and asks a question, his salah will not be accepted for 40 days. And whoever believes in what they say has disbelieved in that which was revealed to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam.
watching a magician on TV, yeah. according to the opinion Pay of most, if that. not all, of the scholars who have answered this question, watching a magician reading your horoscopes makes you from the people whose salah is not accepted for 40 days. Believing in what you read makes you a disbeliever who has left the religion of Islam. Watching someone like this on TV, your salah is not accepted for 40 days, wallahu a'lam. Believing in their magic and the way that they do things and their power, you leave Islam. So it is a very, very, very serious, serious thing to do. Halas. That was it, family. That was very well explained. Just pay attention, open your eyes, don't let uh, Shaitan trick you, your eyes or your mind. And still putting Allah ahead of everything, and you're gonna be fine. That was interesting. Uh, like I said before, I don't like to, you know, uh, to watch these things about Shaitan because. I don't like him, I don't trust him, I don't want to see anything from him, but that was a request and I respect and I love you all and I did it. So thanks so much, thanks for all the support, links, message and I ask Allah to bless you all and I see you guys next time, thank you.